the coming age of Gali, men will have short lives. Their intelligence and memories will be diminished. Not only this, they will also be faithless, misguided, corrupt, hypocritical, quarrelsome, unlucky, and above all of this, always disturbed. What will be the ultimate benefit of such unfortunate souls? The Vedas recommend the performance of sacrifices as a means by which men's all activities can be purified. However, such a process is not easily accessible to all classes of men. Thus, I will divide the one Veda into four parts in order to simplify it for the benefit of all humanity. Dividing the Vedas and writing the Puranas, the fifth Veda and Mahabharata, Vyasadeva began to reflect. <coughs> I am feeling incomplete, though I myself have mastered and written all the Vedas. so worried? What is on your mind? You have written all the Vedas, the Brahma Sutra, the Puranas, Upanishads, the Mahabharata, yet you are dissatisfied. How is this possible? Oh, Gurudev, I have just been wondering this very same thing. I cannot understand. O oh, Gurudev, you are the knower of everything. Please tell me, what is the cause of my discontent? You have overemphasized dharma, artha, karma, and moksha. In other words, you have given great importance explained in great detail, economic development, religiosity, sense gratification, and liberation. And you have not given importance to pure bhakti. The people in general are naturally inclined to rejoice, and you have encouraged them in this way, in the name of religion. Therefore, for those who are not so well situated due to their material attachments, 
people to be given the opportunity to attain the highest goal in life through the transcendental descriptions of the activities of the Supreme Lord. Oh yes, that's right. I have not written anything like that. Did you write how Krishna, the Supreme Lord, has become the son of Nanda and Yashoda, and how although he is unconquerable, he is conquered by their love and affection, and the love and affection of his friends like Subal and Sridhar, who even defeat him in wrestling. Krishna, take this.
Krishna comes to pacify her in various ways. Because of his nefarious activities, he has displeased her. He tries to pacify her again and again. He places his peacock feather at her lotus feet. And then his dear most flute. And if even that won't satisfy her, he will place his head at her lotus feet. And he'll sleep. I will never cause any offence at your lotus feet ever again. Please excuse me. Please believe me. I will never do it again. How beautiful these sweet pastimes. Have you written any of these sweet pastimes? laments for these gopis and feels separation for them, cries and cries in separation for them, even though he is up maroon, up to calm, completely self-satisfied and without any material attachment. Have you written any of these things? Oh, Gurudev, how could I write about such confidential moods? I have no realization. What can I do? You should meditate and enter Samadhi. And when, by the mercy of Bhakti Devi, Krishna's pastimes manifest in your heart, you should write them down for the benefit of all humanity. Sri Narada Muni then told Srila Vyasadeva his own past history, explaining how he attained Uttama Bhakti. He described how, by serving pure devotees, hearing their Hari Kata and taking their Prashad remnants, he became purified. Then he explained how his mother was bitten by a snake and died when he was only five years old and taking it as the special mercy of the Lord. He left for the forest and began to meditate upon Paramatma, the Supersoul.
appeared to me. But in a moment, you disappeared, leaving me broken hearted. What can I do? How can I live my life without seeing you? I must again meditate on your exquisite form. However, although repeatedly meditating and concentrating on the Lord in my heart, that attractive form did not manifest again. I became so dissatisfied and so aggrieved. But then, the merciful Supreme Lord spoke to me with gravity and pleasing words just to mitigate my grief. O oh, Narad, I regret that during this lifetime you will not be able to see me anymore. As it is not so easy for those who haven't perfected their bhakti and are not completely free from all material taints to see me. O oh, virtuous one, I have given you darshan of my form only once, just to increase your desire for me. Because the more you hanker for me, the more you will be freed from all material desires. Thus you will achieve a transcendental form as my eternal associate and forever see me. Transcendental Vina, the name, fame, glories of the Lord constantly. It is personally experienced by me that the only way to cross over this ocean of nations is to constantly hear about, glorify, and remember the transcendental activity, name, form, qualities, and pastimes of the Lord. Oh, the other.